Hey there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video I'll be covering how to Kriegify the tank by adding on the Krieg trench rails and filter unit. So I've got my tank already built, I've magnetised the barrel and the tank commander so they can just come off for ease of transport. If you're interested in seeing how I did those, please check out my earlier video. Now to make this tank fit in with the rest of my Krieg army, I've just got a few extra parts that I need to add on that will make it match the Mars Alpha pattern Lehman Russes that I own. And these are the two trench rails along with the filter units. These two items used to be available separately from Forge World, however they no longer sell them. You still can get them as part of the Mars Alpha Lehman Russ kits, so if you bought one of those you could get them from there. Also keep an eye out on eBay, they tend to crop up every so often. And eBay is exactly where I managed to get these spares from. So just bringing in one of my completed tanks, you can see here how the filter units and the rails attach. So you've got this big unit that goes above the grill. You've got the large long filter attaching to the back. You've got the two small filters attached to either side and then you've got the rails attached to the bottom. Now you can see where these mount onto the small square blocks and then just looking at the bottom you can see that they get mounted on in between these two ridges. So starting off with the filters it's just a matter of gluing them in place. So for this top unit it just needs to go on like so. What you don't want to do is have it back to the front like this because then it becomes at a funny angle. So the key thing to note is this extra bump here goes on the sort of top left if you were looking at it from this direction. So this unit is ever so slightly tapered so you can see that it marries up really nice when it's lined up correctly and if you had it the wrong way around it would just look slightly funny. So you shouldn't really be able to put this on the wrong way unless you just weren't concentrating. Now for this back unit you've got this piping going at the very bottom uh, and it just mounts on like so. Now on the Mars Alpha kits you don't have this extra grill at the back but I think it still fits in pretty well even with it there so you could actually leave that on which is what I think I'm going to do. I mean you could of course remove that detail so it's just this filter instead. But it does all fit in place without having to take it off, so I probably wouldn't. So for the next filter, we've got this one here. Uh, the key thing to note is this pipe goes to the bottom and to the front, and then this can just fit in like so along there. For the next filter unit, which looks a little bit like a turbine, you need the piping at the back angled downwards and that should just mount in place along here. Now it might be a bit of a squeeze because you've got this extra engine and this uh, little edge detail which isn't there in the other kits. However, I think it actually fits in quite nicely between those two. Now let's look at the trench rails next because I want to make sure everything dry fits in first before I start gluing things in. Because if I need to make any modifications to the back part of this tank to make the trench rails fit, it will be easier to do it without the filters in the way. So in the original Lehman Russ kit, the trench rails fitted along the bottom and they actually fitted in between these two ridges here. So if I was to do that on here, you can see that it sort of would fit in there and just go above what I assume is going to be a little light unit but it still clears this back hatch, so that's quite important that it needs to do that. So that one there would be fine. I would just have to remove this section here. And then doing the same on this section, you can actually see that we come into a bit of a big problem because here it's actually now on that back hatch, which wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, as you can see, that back hatch isn't centered. It's centered to the filter unit at the back which is actually all offset slightly and it isn't centered to the tank. If I just bring in the other trench rail you can see how it would look and it would fit in like so. Now that's a really good balance in terms of the positioning of the trench rails but it is really bad for this back hatch. Now we've got a few options here. One we try and place the trench rails in a slightly different manner. 
or two, we either remove this back hatch completely uh, because it might not make too much sense having a back hatch between the rails. You know, in theory, that would make sense because it might be tricky for the crew to actually fit in behind the tank between these trench rails to use that hatch. So maybe it would make sense to remove it. One option that I was thinking is that I do a cutout on the hatch on the left hand side or reduce it in size. So potentially I could remove that left hand bolt on that hinge and remove this whole section of the plate and potentially maybe do the same on the right just to balance it out. I think that would probably end up being quite a messy conversion job so that's not something I want to do. Uh, so instead let's look at repositioning the trench rails so it fits slightly better. So before I had this rail placed between these two like so but you'll notice that there's actually a groove in here which allows you to place it on these ridges. So for example, I could place it on that very end ridge and I could do that on either side like so. So this really widens out the tank rails. So with the widened trench rails, you can see that they clear the hatch at the back but they're actually just hitting into now these extra little bolts and detail at the back. I think this is like a really good compromise. It's the least amount of kind of conversion work and having to remove detail on the tank. It does mean that the positioning of the tank rails doesn't exactly match up the positioning on my other tanks, but I think that's a minor detail in comparison to trying to make this tank work with the rails and that back hatch. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove these bits of detail and then I'm going to glue the trench rail and the filters in place. So here is the completed tank with all the parts glued in. If you just look in closely at all the elements, you can see sort of how I position them. So when you're putting the filter on, you need to use quite a bit of glue on both the underside of the filter as well as in the grill on the hole, just to make sure that there's enough grip on the two parts. You also need to make sure that you're really careful in terms of just how you line this up, making sure that these brackets on the top and sides are all sort of evenly distributed to kind of cover that grill up. For this filter here, you can see that there's two rivets either side. Uh, there was actually one in the middle just where that filter was joining the tank, so I just had to carefully remove that with a knife. And then as you can see just here, that this uh, cabling unit just neatly fits in between those two brackets. There was no trouble fitting in this filter unit. You can see it neatly fits in between the rivets either side and the filter block in the middle. So for the trench rails, you can see where I've removed the rivet that was on this side and also there was one on this side just so the trench rails can neatly fit in. And also I very carefully had removed the light using a sharp knife and then once these trench rails were glued in place, I could actually carefully re-glue it back onto the tank, just repositioning it so it's a bit more evenly spaced out. So you can see where the trench rail is actually touching this resin piece here. Originally, it was causing it to bend upwards slightly and not be as parallel with the tracks as it should be. And that would also impact how this looks just on the back. So I had to file away this base bit of resin on either side, just allowing the trench rail to sit parallel with the rest of the tank. So doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the two tanks on the back, you can see how all the filter units line up with each other. But here you can see how the trench rails has had to be much wider than the original Mars Alpha pattern tanks. Now, in an ideal world, they would both match up perfectly, but for the Destroyer Tank Hunter, having them slightly wider is certainly the best option. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It was a pretty straightforward process attaching the trench rails and the filter units to the Stiggy's Destroyer Tank Hunter. If you are collecting a Krieg army, or if you're thinking about doing your own Siege Warfare themed guard army, I highly recommend looking out for those filter units on eBay. You can also still find them as part of the Mars Alpha pattern tanks available from Forgeworld. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I really appreciate that. If you want to see this tank painted up, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you'll be notified when that video appears. Don't forget to head over to Facebook and Instagram for daily posts. Until the next time, take care.